Have you got any face powder? Yeah. I'm getting a bit of a shine off my forehead. <laughs> and a neutral lippy. Are they taking lippies? <laughs> my name is Paul. I'm married. I'm 73 years of age. And I have prostate cancer. Basically, it's spread out through my body. I knew straight away they had a Macmillan nurse come in with the consultant. He gave me two years. And if you've got a calendar, you can see now it's gone over three. Sue was distraught, very distraught. I was just numb. Anyway, we came home. We didn't speak any at all coming back. And we went upstairs and just laid down on the bed trying to absorb the news. And I remember looking up at the ceiling and there's a screw in the ceiling that should have gone in when we first moved here. I just looked at it and said, I think I better put that bloody screw back in. <laughs> then I said, I suppose we should get married now. Bearing in mind, we've been together for 28 years. <laughs> what I find very difficult is a reason now for getting up because there's no real reason to get up. And when I do get up, and I try to make the bed, I find it very tiring. And though it sounds very funny, guess what's the first thing I want to do when I finish making the bed? To get back on it. Your world gets smaller, and you feel it getting smaller. You feel the, the isolation. Sometimes people don't want to see you because they're frightened to ask you something, or they're frightened they're going to see you ill. They put you on something called chemotherapy. Most people have six turns. I went 10, and I, I call that quite proud of that. I went 10. <laughs> I mean, look at me, I'm, looking, I'm blossoming. <laughs> and uh, that's drugs. <laughs> now, permissible drugs. <laughs> I'm not on the weed yet. <laughs> but the one of the people that gets forgotten in all these conditions is the people that are looking after you. And Sue is the one who's my wife, my best friend, the only person I can really talk to, the only person I can sit and cry in front of, because it happens, you do cry, and you don't know why. So when I stopped on being told my condition, I stopped and thought about it. I should be declaring to the world that everybody can live longer and go on further. <laughs> And don't be afraid to talk about it. And the only way to do that is to draw attention to yourself. And hey ho, I went out and bought pink shirts, pink shirts, pink trousers, pink shoes, and multicoloured socks. I remember I always talked about a bucket list if I ever got ill. And what I did find is that all these things I ever wanted to do, I didn't really care anymore. Trying to be normal should be your bucket list. What makes you contented was when a gaggle of family leave the house that day and they've had a nice time with you and you've left them some memories as well. That's happiness. Hearing other people being happy. That's happiness.